but I cannot go forward in this direction because the string has already finished in this towards this end. So I have to stop at that. So I stop when a string finishes or the characters don't match. So for any starting point, it takes at most order of n time because it's a linear traversal, right? So uh, it takes order of n square time, right? So if you want to improve it even further, we can see that we have n square pairs. We have to take we have to take at least order one to test each one of them. So this method, this this sort of uh, checking method will never work out. It, it will never get your complexity further down than n square because you have n square pair. You have to at least check once. So let's take a look at a totally different approach. So let's take a center point and. As we can see, if we keep going forward, we will find out the maximal palindrome which is centered at this point, right? Now let's say a palindrome of length x is possible to form if I start from this center on either ends. You can also see that I will definitely have a palindrome of length x minus 2 also possible because I am matching all characters, right? So. So you can see that a palindrome of length 2 is possible, 4 is possible, up to x is possible and x plus 2 is not possible. That's when I have to stop. Right. If I had a way to match two sub substrings in constant time, then I could do binary search on this x. Right. If suppose you had a way that you could match two strings in order one, then you will match this reverse and this string and do a binary search on x. Each time you will see if it if it matches you can go forward. If it doesn't match you will change your range to low and mid. Right. So doing a binary search I can find the maximal x such that this still holds true. Make sense? And the limits of binary search would be limited by the minimum of either string length on this side or that side. Make sense? You can take another case for odd, in which case you will forget this character and you will look at the strings on this side and that side excluding this character. Is this clear? So if I could check, if I could compare two strings in order 1, I can have order of n log n solution, right? It takes log n time to do binary search from each center point. Is this clear? Now what I am going to do is, I will explain you a way in which you can take this string, do some pre-processing with it and afterwards you can compare it to any two substrings in constant time. The idea that we use for this type of matching is very similar to range minimum or maximum queries. Okay. So first of all, if I store a substring as a full substring, I can never match them in order 1 because I have to go through the substring at least to match. Right? So I have to look for some other representation, maybe mapping this substring to some number. So if I, if I can map a substring to some number, then it's possible for me to match in order 1. Right? So I have to look for some mapping. Now, an easy solution that could come to your mind is, you can hash a substring on some particular base, find out a number mod something, which will represent this string, and when you want to compare two strings, you can simply compare that number and with high probability you will have a successful answer. So you can represent this string as a number in base 26 because in base 26 all these will become digits. A is a digit, B is a digit if, if you are considering base 26. 
So if you take a number in base 26, represent to represent this string using that number, you can do a comparison, but it's not 100% uh, sure that it will work, right? And anyway, the problem is you have n square such substrings which you want to map to numbers. So if you store a mapping for each of these, you again have got order n square runtime already because you have to store even if computation takes constant time. So this is also not working. Now let's look at a different type of representation. Suppose given this string, I stored mapping, some mapping for all substrings of length 2 to the power k for any k. So if I have a string a b a b a d taking k equal to 0, I should have a mapping for a I should have a mapping for B, I should have a ma mapping for all these. Okay? Is that clear? Taking K equal to 1, I should have one mapping for AB. I should have one mapping for BA and so on. So I should have a mapping for every two character substrings as well. Is that clear? Taking K equal to 2, I will have a mapping for every four character substrings. I will increment this until 2 to the power k becomes more than n. In which case there is no substring of 2 to the power k. I will keep increasing this. Now, now let us look at a substring of length 2 to the power k for some k. This substring is made up of two substrings that is each of them are length 2 to the power k minus 1 right if i am looking at a substring starting at length starting at index i of length 2 to the power k then you can make it make it up using concatenating two substrings of length 2 power k minus 1 so first is starting at i of length 2 power k minus 1 second starting at i plus 2 power k minus 1 and length is 2 power k minus 1. Now let us say I am computing this bottom up in this order. So I already have a succinct number representation for these two. Right? They are not strings anymore, they are numbers. So if I combine this pair, I can get another I can get a pair corresponding to every substring of length 2 power k. Now obviously I cannot live with a pair because if I want to go to k plus 1 it will become a 4 tuple and so on. Right. So what I do is after I get a pair I will again map it to some number. Does it make sense? So each time you have to get a pair from pre previous level and map it to a number so that you can proceed forwards. Right. Now to map a pair to a number, you should note that when I am taking strings of substrings of length 2 power k, there could be only n minus 2 power k such substrings. Right? Because the static index has to be between 0 to n minus 2 power k. So there will be at most these many substrings. If I sorted these substrings, then each substring will have a rank in the sorted order, right? That rank will be between 0 to, uh, that is 1 to n minus 2 power k. Is, is this much clear? So what I am trying to do is, I am sorting pair of numbers, there are n minus 2, n minus 2 power k such pairs and finally in the sorted order, each pair will have its own ranking, right? So I map this pair to the ranking which it has in the sorted order. So we have 
we have a string that is a b c d a b a b mm, okay a b a a b a b this is my string which i am trying to pre process so let's look at substring of length 1 there are only four such distinct substrings that is a b uh, only three such distinct substrings that is a b and d right let's put a rank 1 on a a rank 2 on b and a rank 3 on d so we got 1 2 1 1 2 1 Three as our ranks. Make sense? So I have mapped every substring of length one, that is two to the power zero, to some number. Number I defined as the order in the sort, uh, uh, the ranking in the sorted order. Now let's look at length two. So we have got a pair of one comma two here, that is AB. A pair of two comma one, BA. A pair of one comma one, then another pair of one comma two, then a pair of two comma one, finally a pair of one comma three. This is clear. I just took pairs and represented. Now, if I were to sort these pairs, obviously one one will get the best ranking. One two will come afterwards. One three after that. Then two one, right? So let's take. I'll write down the remapping after the sorting. So one two, the ranking of one two was two, right? Because it comes after one one. So we have a two here. This is the worst possible subset, uh, substring. So the ranking of it comes in the final. So the ranking of this is four. Then the ranking is. One, we got another two, then four, and then three. Does it make sense? I sorted and assigned a new ranking. So I'll remove these pairs and write down the new ranking instead. So we have got two, four, one, two, four, three. This is my new representation. For k equal to one, that is substring of length two. Now let's move on to k equal to two. The pairs I have got are two four, four one, one two, two four, and four three. I will sort and get another mapping for k equal to two layer. So I have got. This is the smallest. So I'll put this, then this, two four, afterwards four one and four three. So let me rewrite the mapping. It will be two three one two four. So I can work it out until. So okay. So these are substrings of length four, right? That is k equal to two. Now I can see that there is no substring of length eight. That is two to the power three. So this is all I have to compute. So I have got three sequences. Let me just note down the sequences. We had one two one one two one three. We had two four one two four three. We also had two three. One, two, four. Right. Now, if I were to ask you, yeah. Two comma four. Reference to a string. What does it mean? It means a string. This substring, which is A B. Actually, I got this wrong. It uh, wait. Yeah, it will be two comma one. Like after this substring, I have got this substring. To make A B A A, I took A B and I took A A. I had some mapping for these two, and I wrote them down as a pair. Then sorted. It essentially means that if I sorted all substrings 